I have not picked up a racket in probably five weeks, so I feel like this is gonna be kind of tragic. This is the little pickleball sweater from Stodd. How cute is that? So cute. Pickles. We're not playing pickleball today though. Pickleball. <laughs> says I slept for five hours last night, which like, if you guys know my sleep, I'm like a, a 10 to 12 hour kind of gal. I like coming back from Europe because then I'm going to bed super early and then I'm waking up super early and I'm super productive. But with Australia, it's basically a whole day. So my whole circadian rhythm is just so out of whack. So I slept like six hours, six hours. I slept 12 hours a couple nights ago and now I slept five hours and I just feel foggy. I can't even complain right now though because Taylor's in Lithuania. Could not tell you where that is on a map, but he's in Lithuania. So he came home for 48 hours, entered his cave, the, the game room, and then left immediately to go back to Europe. But happy to be home. Obviously the last couple weeks were a lot. There's a lot going on. The vlogs, there's a lot going on. Um, but obviously that's not what my life is like all the time. So I do have a couple chill days at home, which I I appreciate. It's a little bit slower. It's a little bit different different vibe on, on YouTube for sure, but it is kind of nice to just be in my pajamas all day, which by the way, these are from Skims. I just got this, it's from their new collection. And the, um, the sweatpants bottom is, it's wide leg instead of, I don't know why I just showed it like that, but it's wide leg instead of when it gets like elastic and tight on your ankle, which I really like and it's very soft and cozy, but I got this sweatshirt in a medium and I wish I would have gotten it in a large because it's it's still a little bit small for being a medium. Anyways, went to tennis this morning. I have therapy, I have press interview. This is kind of like a pretty typical chill LA day in my life. I restarted therapy about a month ago because I wanted to go into 2024 super strong. You guys know my word for the year is momentum. I just wanted to make sure that I was accomplishing my SMART goals, which I talked about in a video about a month ago. And I've been using BetterHelp, which is the sponsor of this video. I have been through a few therapists. Kind of finding a good therapist is a little bit like dating. BetterHelp makes it super simple to find a licensed therapist online. You can do video call, you can do phone call, you can just do messaging, whatever you're most comfortable with. It's super flexible. BetterHelp can match you to over 30,000 licensed therapists. And because it's online, they don't necessarily have to be in your area. So there's just a wider range of options to make sure that you can find the best fit. To get started, you just fill out a questionnaire. And in most cases, you'll get matched to a therapist within 48 hours. So it's really quick, really simple. And if it's not the right fit, which happens sometimes, then you can find a new one at no additional cost. You guys know I'm the biggest advocate for therapy. It has genuinely changed my life and 4 million people have used BetterHelp to help change theirs. So if you want to try it, you can go to betterhelp.com slash Morgan Riddle. I'm good. How are you guys? Doing well. You said something along the lines of like, there aren't a lot of brands that are really appealing to the demographic of like tennis fans as a group. Actually, I think that sports in general do not do a great job of catering to female fans. Um, all of them, all of them, you know? So I think it's, it's not just a tennis issue, it's a it's a football issue, it's a hockey issue, it's an F1 issue. So I, I don't think there's any sports that are doing a great job at it, to be honest. I'm like desperately trying to get out of the habit of getting back into bed in the mornings, but sometimes it's just, it's so nice. It's my favorite place to work from. So I just finished class. Yeah, so about two months ago, November, I was, I was going through it. I was going through it a little bit. And I was kind of having a midlife, not midlife, early life crisis, whatever. But I, something came over me and I decided that I really wanted to go back to school and get my master's. So I have my bachelor's in English literature, loved school, but 
it, it was weird for me because I always had a really strong distaste for grad programs and for masters. I convinced myself that they are a scam. Maybe part of me still thinks that way. They're just really expensive and with the point where I was going in my career when I graduated, I was like, I, I'm not gonna go to grad school. There's no point in me going to grad school. But then in November, I was like, hmm, why do I all of a sudden really want to go to grad school? I think that might be a mid 20s girl crisis type of thing. But I was talking to my mom about it. My mom worked in higher education for a long time. So we were kind of going back and forth. I was looking at programs. I was looking at applications for programs. And then the last month happened and I was swamped when I was in Australia. If, if I was doing any sort of class or program, I would have lost my mind. I literally wouldn't have had enough hours in the day for it. So then I was like, how do I go about this? Because the reason that I had considered it is because I miss learning. I miss having that structure in my day. I like learning. I can do that through so many different avenues, podcasts, books, whatever, but I just wanted it to a little bit higher scale. So obviously going back to school and like a, a legitimate program is the first thing that came to my mind. However, with the last month that happened, I'm like, okay, that's probably off the table right now, maybe one day, but where I'm at right now, I don't think I could handle it. So I found that most Ivy League schools have online completely free courses that are taught by their professors. And I'd seen someone else post about this specific one. It's called the Science of Wellbeing by Yale University. It's a 10 week course. You have lessons, video lessons, quizzes, homework. It's basically, it's basically like you're just taking an online class. Um, so I started this at the end of last week, right when I was on the way back from Australia. I'm excited about this one particularly because I feel like the science of well-being, the science of happiness is something that I'm interested in and I like talking about on here. So I'm gonna link the course down below if any of you guys are interested in doing it with me. I think it's really interesting. I think it's good to learn new things. If not, then I'm hoping that there's enough valuable information in this for me to, to bring to you guys. And if I find any little good nuggets from it. You know, I, I want to talk about it on this channel. So I'll link that down below in conjunction with this. I have also started a program to learn Spanish. Did I decide that I'm going to do that? Literally 48 hours ago, I decided I want to be fluent in Spanish by the end of 2024. So I've taken French and Greek in the past because I lived in Athens for six months. I took an intensive Greek language program while I was there. And then I did three years of French in college. So I have a pretty basic understanding of it. Initially, I was like, oh, I want to become fluent in French, of course. Then I realized I don't really like going to France anymore, to be honest, which is sad because Paris used to be one of my favorite cities. But the last couple times that I've gone there, honestly, I'm so sorry if you were French and you were watching this, but personal interactions that I've had have not been great. So I'm like, why do I want to learn French when I don't even really like going to France? But Spanish, I live in California. We spend time in Spain. We spend time in Mexico. Two of Taylor's team members, um, his physio and his coach's wife are both completely fluent in Spanish. So if I do this course and I'm doing my Duolingo and I have the opportunity to be with them, 40 weeks here, we all travel together um, to be able to actually actively practice it with them. I think I'll be able to pick it up pretty quickly. As it stands right now, today, I know like five Spanish words. One of them is coquina and the rest are also all from Narcos. I'm absolutely determined. So by the end of 2024, I wanna do one of those get ready with me videos that's entirely in Spanish, cause I love those. So that's a good hour and a half chunk of my day, pretty much every day moving forward, which I actually like because it adds more structure to my day. I've kind of decided okay, every morning at 9 a.m. like I'm up, I'm on my computer and I'm doing my lesson. And I feel like that's just a better way for me to start my day. I love doing content creation. I love the freedom of it, but the lack of structure I think does mess with me a lot. And so I've been trying to figure out ways to combat that. And I'm hoping this helps. Okay, I just changed because I'm gonna go meet my friend after this, but I wanted to make, <laughs> I wanted to make lunch first. So when you travel, because TikTok knows everything about you, your phone knows everything about you. We know this. Your For You page adjusts based on the place that you're in. So when I go to New York, I get New York TikToks. When I'm in Australia, I end up on Australia TikTok and the Australian For You page, which 
compared to the US, TikTok is a very, very unhinged place. It, it kind of reminds me of TikTok in 2019. It's just, it's just better. Notice it's a lot of like Vine energy, a lot of comedy, a lot of videos of people killing giant spiders in their apartment. One thing that I kept seeing on my Australian For You page when I was there was videos of this viral chopped Italian sandwich. I saw it so much when I was there and it was all Australian creators. So I don't really know if anyone in the US is posting about it, but we're gonna make it. So the idea of the sandwich is that you get all the ingredients onto a chopping board, hence why it's called a chopped Italian sandwich, and you chop them all up. So then when you take a bite into the sandwich, you get every ingredient perfectly in every bite. So we have all the ingredients piled up and then we just kind of roll this up and chop it. I had to get a bigger cutting board because that wasn't meant to go everywhere. So I'm hoping I like this. So this can be one of my like four go-to meals that I actually prepare myself. Cooking is just very time consuming, but like sandwiches, if I can just toss that on a piece of bread, that is my ideal meal. And I always think that when I watch like other influencers, what I eat in a day videos, I'm like, where are the ham sandwiches, ladies? What happened to ham sandwiches? Then we are taking a scoop of mayonnaise, a drizzle of red wine vinegar, salt, pepper. Okay, then we mix that up. Sorry, this is not the most <laughs> aesthetic. Okay, then we're gonna take our bread. I hollowed out the inside of the bread and then basically you just scoop your filling into it. Honestly, it tastes like a fresher version of a Jersey Mike's Club sandwich. Very good. There's truly nothing better in LA than finding a place with ample free parking. Nothing better. I am going to meet Peyton at this dog park, but it's not a normal dog park. It's a cool dog park for cool dog people. It's called Dog People and it's really cute. I've seen a lot of people posting about it, but obviously I can never come because you're not allowed to come unless you have a dog. But now Peyton has a dog and her dog technically can bring Peyton and I as guests, which is kind of hilarious. So I just brought my computer. We're gonna go work for a bit. What? Winnie. What's going on here? What's going on? Hi! Oh, hello! Who are you? This is the best. People come and work and bring their dogs. It's like a dog park and then on the weekends they have a bar. So this place is packed with people and their dogs. And it's very millennial core. <laughs> but definitely a day brightener. I just got home and it's already dark out. So sad. I forgot how blessed I was in Australia because the sun sets at 9 p.m. there and it sets at like 5 p.m. here and it's so depressing. I feel like that's why whenever I come back to LA, I'm like, this sucks. You guys might have noticed, actually you probably did notice because literally why would you notice? I don't do hauls on here um, or like really talk about products or do unboxings. And now I'm gonna be hypocritical because I just got a PR package from Louis Vuitton, which is insane to me. Um, they sent me this little card that says Mademoiselle Morgan Riddle, which is kind of cool. And they sent me this bag from their like Y2K collection. So cute and it has this little mini purse on it. So when I have a daughter, then I can take this one off and she can have one. A daughter or a chihuahua, it doesn't really matter to me. I'm panicking and I actually need your guys' opinion because I'm going to the Super Bowl, right? Big fashion moment, I would say, at least for me. Like, I want to show up with fits for the Super Bowl. Very important to me. However, all of this inspo that I'm looking at for, like, football wags, that's mostly who I'm looking at inspo for, for the game, and there's a certain kind of style in the football wag world. It's very not my style. I don't really own anything like that. I don't think that I want to go really repping a team. I think because it's the Chiefs and the 49ers, I can just wear red, which I have. I own a lot of red. I'm like, do I go like 90s posh spice, kind of sporty, chic vibe? Or do I just really lean into the football thing? Because like it is the Super Bowl. But I don't want to look like an idiot and I don't want to feel uncomfortable. I still want to go to the game as like, I'm Morgan Riddle. I'm not morphing into this very different style that's not me. Probably overthinking a lot. But anyways, I ordered 
a lot of potential options so I'm not stressed when it comes. So the thing with Super Bowl is I have six events leading up to the actual game that I need outfits for. So it's it's a whole thing for the weekend. Um, I got this, which is, if you know the plates, you know, you know the plates, I have one. I love her. I think in my vlog next week, I'll probably dive more into Super Bowl prep stuff because I have a lot more stuff that I got that's on the way. But this is one of those things that's kind of a more bali esque thing that I really normally would not wear, like a shiny gold corset, but I feel like I can Morganify it a little bit. I have a really sick dress from Retrofet that is on the way, but it's supposed to get delivered the day that I leave. So if that does not work, this is sort of my backup plan. And I got this because I think it kind of looks like the trophy. <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted to order a bunch of stuff and have time. If I need to get something tailored, I can get it tailored. This is probably more of a daytime outfit, but it's a little sporty skirt. I also don't know how cold it's going to be in Vegas. Some days there right now, it's in the 60s. And some days, it's in the 40s. The girl is stressed. Okay, this is a helmet lang. So this, this and the little skirt that I just showed are a set. I also have certain things because obviously red is going to be the color of the Super Bowl so I have stuff like this I have a few different red jackets I have red boots I have red bags so I could just play around with red a lot the buff fashion is just a whole new world for me so I'm obviously a little stressed about it <laughs> To some people it's gross obviously it's not gross to me i have sauerkraut or kimchi with most of my meals it's not even like a weird wellnessy thing i just have an absolute addiction even my mouth is watering talking about it to the briny salty taste of them the sauce i order on amazon and it is the best with anything everything any kind of dipping sauce but i dip my chicken in here and it is so good taylor and i are obsessed with it then once i have my dinner ready i will make my what the internet has decided to call a sleepy girl mocktail i think that's what i've seen on tiktok i'm having a recess mood it's a strawberry rose and it's magnesium and adaptogen infused sparkling water so i just drink this out of a wine glass every night i'll do this or some other type of canned mocktail or new shit and i will take this magnesium from moon juice i just got a new one of these like two days ago because i finished my other one i've gone through i think maybe five jars of this at this point i actually bring it with me when i travel and i'm very good about having it put it in this or i'll put it in tea oh Usually I do it before I pour it in so it doesn't fizz like that, but I forgot that it does that. Okay, well, don't do what I just did. It's my little concoction. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I do take melatonin. I drug myself with z -Quil. I'll take some gummies knock myself out because my sleep schedule is always pretty messed up. Dinner and my little mocktail and I've been watching Griselda, which I talked about Narcos earlier, but if you guys are fans of Narcos or you haven't watched Narcos, it's absolutely amazing. And Griselda is the new like spinoff show of it. And it is so, so good. I started it yesterday. I think I'm already on episode six. I'm blowing through it. It's unreal, so I'm gonna go finish that tonight. And then it's sleepy night, night time.